Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own gamepad using two common I2C modules. I'm showing this working on the Raspberry Pi, but it should work just fine on any of the Linux boards as long as it has I2C available. So I'm breaking this up into four sections. First, I'll show how to wire up the modules. Then I'll show how they function with the software that I wrote with just one button and one joystick. Then I'll combine both together and create a full gamepad using a broken PS3 controller. And finally, I'll run a setup script that makes the driver load at startup. I'm using a breadboard with this Raspberry Pi breakout for demonstration to hopefully help visualize what I'm doing. So let's start by routing the 3.3 volt and ground pins from the Pi to the power rail on the side of the breadboard. That just makes it easier for us to add power to the modules as we go. All right, so here's the two modules that are being used here. The first is the ADS-1015. It's a four channel analog to digital converter and it'll give us the joystick. Let's hook it up starting with the power. Install wires on the power rail of the breadboard and route them to the V and G pins on the module. Now let's wire up the I2C pins. I'm using I2C1 labeled SDA1 and SCL1 on the breakout, which is GPIOs two and three just below the 3.3 volt power pin. Install wires into these positions on the breadboard and connect them to the pins labeled SDA and SCL on the module. Now let's add an analog joystick. This joystick needs the same 3.3 volt power input, so let's add that. It has two analog outputs labeled X and Y. These go to the analog module and the way I have the driver set up, the X axis for the left joystick goes to input A0 on the module and Y goes to input A1. The other module is the MCP23017. It's a 16 pin GPIO expander and that'll give us the digital input for the buttons. So let's wire this one up the same way as the analog module, starting with the power. And now the I2C pins. Now we need a button to show this working and luckily the joystick I used also has a single button inside of it that's activated when you push down on the stick. It's the output labeled B. I configured the GPIO module to pull each input up to 3.3 volts with an internal resistor and a button is detected as pressed when the pin connects to ground. I modified the joystick to do exactly that and when you push down on the stick, it connects to ground. So run a wire from the button to the GPIO module. The module has 16 inputs for buttons labeled A0 through A7 and B0 through B7, and you can choose any one of them. The next step is to compile and run my code and make sure everything works. Copy everything from my GitHub page to a folder on the Raspberry Pi and select that folder in the command prompt. If you look at the folder, there's a few files in it. Gamepad.c is the driver and makefile is the script that compiles it. Just run make and it'll compile with the options that I set. Now there's a new file in the folder called gamepad and that's the compiled driver. Let's run it and see what happens. So right off the bat, it gives an error message saying you have to run a sudo. I included a bunch of error messages like this to hopefully help with the troubleshooting as you go. Anyway, let's do what it recommends. All right, the first error message is gone, but there's a new one saying I2C isn't working. That's because this is a fresh RetroPie image and nothing is configured yet, including I2C. To fix that, just follow the instruction and run sudo raspi config, select interface options, I2C, enable I2C, then exit out and reboot the Raspberry Pi. Then try running the driver again. All right, there's no error message and it looks like things are working. Go ahead and hit control C to close the driver. So as a quick demonstration here, I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't have things hooked up correctly. I'm gonna reverse the SDA and SCL wires on the analog module. And now I'm gonna run the driver again and we should get an error message. And there it is, letting us know that the module is not detected and that the joystick won't function. So if this happens, just check your wiring. It has checks for each module and it'll tell you which one is having problems. All right, continuing on, let's make this work in Linux and RetroPie. Boot up your Raspberry Pi and if this is a fresh installation, you should be greeted with this screen if you're using RetroPie. The gamepad driver isn't currently running, so RetroPie doesn't see anything. Hit F4 to exit emulation station and get back to the command prompt. Go back into the folder with the driver 
and run the driver again, except this time add an ampersand to the end to run it in the background. And now let's make sure the gamepad is actually detected. To do this, first let's list all the devices under dev input and look for the joystick. And there it is, JS0. Now let's look at JS0 using JS test. I'll move the joystick around and try the button. Everything looks good and button 8 is switching between off and on in JS test as I press down on the joystick. If you choose a different pin on the expander, your button will be something other than button 8. Alright, it all looks good, so let's go back to Emulation Station, hit Control c to exit JS test, then just type exit in the command prompt. And now that we're back in Emulation Station, we can see that the joystick is detected. To start configuration, just press and hold down the button, and when you do that, it'll show up as Other Mod Gamepad. Now this is only one button, and that doesn't do a lot of good, so let's take this one step further. I'm going to close Emulation Station again by pressing F4, and that'll exit this controller setup process. And now I'm going to shut down the Raspberry Pi while I move some wiring around. So this is a broken PS3 controller that I Frankensteined a bit. What I did is I wired directly to the button connections on the board. When I press a button, the wire for that button switches to ground. This was a pain to do, and I had to cut all the traces leading to whatever IC is on the board, so I can't exactly recommend doing it but I think it was a good way to demonstrate what I'm doing here. So I disconnected the joystick for both of the modules and now I'm hooking up the wires from the PS3 controller, starting with the GPIO expander. Like I said before, it doesn't matter which wire goes where, as long as it's going in one of those 16 pins. I also wire to both of the analog joysticks in the PS3 controller, so I'll hook those to the analog module. Like before, the left joystick goes to inputs A0 and A1 on the analog module, and this time the right joystick is also getting wired up and goes to inputs A2 and A3. I'll come back to that in a bit. All right, back to the command prompt. I'll run the driver again in the background and open JS test again. Everything looks the same, but the difference this time is that many more buttons work. It all looks good, but I'm gonna do one more thing before going back to RetroPie. So first I'll close JS test and the driver and now I'm going to open the driver again, but I'm making a small change to the way I do it. I'm typing everything almost the same way, but after gamepad, I'm adding dash J and the number zero. And I'm opening JS test again, so I can look at everything. And now the buttons are showing up, but the joystick is not. So that extra argument of dash J and the number zero means that the driver won't add any joysticks and will ignore the analog module entirely. So I'm going to close this driver again, and I'm going to type the same command again, but instead of 0, I'm changing the number to 2. And back to JS test. And this time it's showing two joysticks. So now it's making use of all four inputs on the analog module. This isn't enabled by default because it slows the scanning of each axis from 30 times a second to 15 times a second. But as you can see, I made it very easy to turn on and off. Alright, so both sticks are showing, but there's so much text that some of it is off the screen. So I'm going to resize the text and try that again. Alright, now everything is showing, so let's test it out. And it all looks good. The final step here is to get back to RetroPie and finish the setup. The gamepad is detected just fine, so I'll hold a button to start the process and run through all the buttons. I didn't bother hooking up some buttons, like the shoulders, so I'm just going to skip those by holding one of the buttons I already configured. And now for the analog. So left analog is detected just fine. And let's try right. Alright, looking good. And I'll make the PlayStation button the hotkey. And hit OK to finalize everything. Alright, it is working. And let me check the joysticks. And they're working fine too. And now I'm just going to try it in the game. So the joysticks won't be turned on by default in these older games. And you'll have to go into settings and select the analog to digital type. But everything else should work fine by default. 
All right, there's one last thing to cover before closing out the video. In order to use the gamepad, you have to manually start the driver every time you restart the Raspberry Pi. So I added a script called setup that'll take care of all that for you. It'll also take care of the I2C configuration that I showed in the previous section of the video. When you run it, it'll start by enabling I2C in the same way that Raspberry Config does. And then it'll compile the driver using the make file and the gamepad.c files and copies the compile driver to the binary folder in Linux. And then it'll give you the option of loading the driver at startup as a service. Once the script runs, it'll tell you to restart the Raspberry Pi in order to finish the setup and load the driver. Then after a reboot, if you enabled it, it'll automatically load the driver. So that about covers it. If you wanna use this code in one of your projects, you can find all the links below in the description. Everything is open source and posted on GitHub. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to everyone supporting my work on Locals and Patreon. Have a good one, guys.